This is a heads up that to celebrate the end of zombies, I've re-released some of my zombies merch and it's available via the link in the description down below on waffles.onish.com. Don't miss out, it's only going to be there for a limited time. To begin the Targda Toten Easter Egg, turn on the power switch in the spawn and then head up the lighthouse to talk with the hermit. The next step is to activate one of the Hermit's Challenge Dummies, and you can pick any dummy to begin with, it's not a problem, there are several of them on the map, but I'm going to be showing you this one just here. The dummy, when activated, will give you a challenge on the left side of your screen. You need to complete that challenge and then return to the dummy, hold square, claim your reward, and you'll then get a new challenge. Each dummy can give you three challenges total before it's finished off and you'll need to go find a new dummy. And the Easter egg step itself requires you to go through six of those challenges. So you need to completely finish two of the dummies. I'll also explain how to carry the pea jars and where to find the soup ingredients in just a moment. While you're doing those challenges, because it's going to take a little bit of time, you have a perfect opportunity to work on some other things that you need to get done in your game in order to get through to the end of the Easter egg. So for example, in your game, later on, you will need a Wunderwaffe. It's required for an Easter egg step. So you can either start spinning the box as soon as possible and try and hold on to a Waffe for the rest of your game, or you could start doing the free Wunderwaffe Easter egg, which I've got a whole guide for on my channel, accessible via the link in the description down below. There's also very basic stuff to do, like activating the pack of punch machine and some slightly more complicated stuff like getting the golden pack a punch machine and opening up the facility area of the map. If you need help with any of that stuff, it's all in my golden pack a punch guide, which again is linked in the description down below. It might also be worth remembering that you need to activate all three power switches on the map. That's in the spawn, on the boat on the top floor, in the kind of captain's cabin steering wheel area, and in the facility. And with those power switches activated, you'll be able to go to your flingers, one of which is in the facility and one of which is on the boat in its old spawn location, and grab a fuse box, which you can take to the hermit for repairs. He'll lower down a little platform. You put it on the platform. He'll then take it for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then he'll give it back to you. And then you can bring your fuse box back to the flinger and activate it so you can fast travel a little bit more easily around the map. The fact that the challenges require quite a few kills will also mean that you'll probably burn a couple rounds doing this. And so something I'd really recommend is anytime you see a fire zombie, don't just shoot it. Instead, snowball it. You can find snowballs on the floor around the map in pretty much every location. And if you snowball it and kill it with a snowball, it will freeze up and drop you a piece of dynamite. The drop itself takes a few seconds to spawn in, so don't panic if you don't see it straight away. You'll need to run over to it, hold square and pick it up. And when you have all three dynamite parts, which you can see in my HUD just here, you'll need to go to a buildables bench and craft yourself the dynamite. And you'll then need to pick it up once it's been crafted. This will be required later in the Easter egg, but it also allows you to open up various areas of the map that are essentially shortcuts to different areas that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. The flinger, for example, in the facility needs to be dynamited before you can access it. So I'd say get working on dynamite straight away, craft some, use it at the facility, maybe use one other dynamite elsewhere. But then from that point onwards or so, I would hold on to your dynamite for the Easter egg step when we need it in a few minutes. Another thing you could start working on is Samantha's music box. I'm going to explain exactly how you get that now, even though you don't actually need it in the quest for another 30 minutes or so. It's just an easy one to start working on early. You're going to need two gold key cards to kick things off, and both of them are in the facility. One can be found in the decontamination room. Its first possible spawn is going to be inside the washing machine just here. The second possible spawn is going to be in the kind of washing shower uh, eye wash thing station just here. It's where it is in my game as well, so you can see what it looks like. And the third is going to be in one of these sinks just here. There may be more spawns for this, and if there are, I'll have them listed in the description down below. The item should be in this room though, so if you just walk around holding square, you should pick it up. The second key card is on the other side of the facility in the specimen storage. You're going to want to first check the shelving just here. It will be on the bottom. That's where it is in my game, so you can see what that spawn looks like. Another possible spawn for this is going to be near the mail area, so head over here, hold square, and you should be able to see if you pick it up or not. And third and finally, you need to check the toilets. I know, it sounds a bit absurd. There's not going to be a gold key card in the toilet, surely, but there is. So check in the toilet. The two key cards after you've picked them up need to be encoded in a machine that is also in the facility, which is quite handy. So slot them both in one by one, and then they'll pop out moments later, and you'll be able to pick them back up. The two encoded cards need to be brought to the vault in the center of the facility, with each of them being placed either side of the big vault door. They'll slot right into the wall, and when you've placed them both in, you'll be able, optionally, when you're ready to start a lockdown sequence, 
sequence as long as your whole team are present, which is going to basically slowly roll that door down and allow you to pick up the Samantha's music boxes from inside. However, it's a lockdown, zombies will be spawning, so don't go into this with just a strife and expect to get out alive. The music boxes can lag a little bit and not allow you to pick them up at first, but once the door is fully down and the characters stop talking about respect or something, you should be able to grab them and you'll then have them ready in your inventory for later in your game. Okay, if you're following the same dummies as me in my gameplay just here, then you're going to need to carry some pee jars. They can be found at the top of the lighthouse where you talk to the hermit, just lying against the wall. And when you've grabbed a pee jar, you need to walk do not sprint, just walk the exact path that I am walking in this gameplay. If you fall through the air at any point, you fail. If you jump, you fail, and you'll need to go get a new P-Jar and then start walking again towards the original Call of the Dead spawn, also known in this game as The Beach. When you've walked all the way there, you need to hold square, and you should see your counter tick up on the left-hand side, showing you that you've successfully emptied a P-Jar. You just need to do this several times, and when done, your challenge will be complete. You can go and get your reward from the challenge dummy, and you can then go and activate a new dummy. Now, the one that I would suggest personally would be the one that's on the top of the boat. That's going to require you to get melee kills. But again, remember, you've got your shield, so that should help you out a lot. And you'll also need to get soup ingredients for the final part of that one too, which are very straightforward to acquire. There are multiple spawn points for each soup ingredient, but they're all very near each other, so it's going to be okay. The ingredients cannot be picked up early, so you need to get kills while standing still, get your reward, get melee kills, get your reward, and then when you're on the cooking step, that's when you can pick up the ingredients. The first one that I'm going to be showing you is just here. It's a piece of cauliflower that I'm picking up. It's in a wheelbarrow very nearby. You can get some other vegetables. So just here near this kind of grass, there is another vegetable that you might have spawn in or you might have spawn in an aubergine or an eggplant or something on this barrel. That'll be one of your soup ingredients. Another soup ingredient can be found in the kind of diner area inside the boat. It's going to either be on this little kind of counter here, which is where I had it in my game, or it can be on this sort of chair across the room, or it can be somewhere near these sort of overturned tabley things somewhere along here. You should be able to see the hint string for it pretty easily. Then finally, we need some meat. So we're going to head back to the spawn area of the map, the kind of boat dock area. And in this this building, you can find a leg of lamb potentially on this kind of countertop, or you might find what I think is like a rack of ribs or something just here on this kind of wall area or on the kind of crate looking thing. And finally, the last possible spawn is going to be just a pile of something. I don't know what meter is just around the corner. Then when you've picked up an item from each of those three locations, you're going to need to head back to the cooking pot that's on the very far end of the ship where Mule Kick used to be in original Call of the Dead. That is going to take your soup ingredients and you then need to snowball the pot in order to add water, which is what it asks you to do, and finish cooking your meal. That's going to complete your challenge and you need to go and then collect your reward from the dummy, which is just a couple of meters away from you. When you've completed all six of your challenges, i.e. you've completed and claimed the rewards of two of the challenge dummies, you're going to need to head up to the Hermit. He'll talk for a second and then give you the four original Call of the Dead dials that you guys might remember from that Easter egg many years ago. You need to bring those dials, once you've picked them up, to the old original Juggernog spawn, which is in the boat on the kind of bottom floor area, basically next to the room that has the big glowing Apothecon blood thing in it. Now, really important, very quick thing to mention while we're here, there's a blue pipe above a big fire blocking an entrance to this room. Shoot the pipe once and it will extinguish the fire and give you a new entrance into this area. Anyway, back to the dials. The room that you're seeing here connected to the red blood room is going to have four places where you can place down those dials. And when you drop them down, you're going to need to rotate them until you hear a ding. Now, if you hear a ding and then you keep rotating one of the dials, you need to rotate it back so that it's on the one that dings. That's really important. This step is supposed to be solved by running around the map and finding colored numbers, but you can brute force it just by listening out for the dings, and so I won't talk about the numbers here. However, if Treyarch decide to get cheeky and patch this, then you guys will need to check the description down below, and I'll make a follow-up video basically giving you guys the exact number locations so that you're covered and have them in your game too. You'll hear a voice start talking to you when you finish that fourth dial. It's very, very highly recommended from me for you to turn on subtitles for this because you're only going to get one hint here towards what you need to do for the next step. And if you miss what it says, you're going to be in for a really bad time. So make sure subtitles are turned on and listen out for when it says find us offerings three. It's then going to give you a hint towards a location, which I'm going to basically have to run through all of the possibilities for now in order to cover all the bases. The thing that you're looking for is basically a bone or a body part of some kind. It can be a skull, a jawbone, it can be a bit of flesh, just something like that. There are a dumb 
number of spawn locations for these, and while I think I've got them all in this video, I will have an extended list in the description down below if new ones do get found. The way it'll work before I show you the locations is that it will hint you one, you'll go and grab it, it will then hint you a second, you'll go and grab that, and then it will hint you a third, and once you pick that up, you'll be on to the next step. With all of these, I've worked really hard to try and get the exact body part location, but some might take a little bit of extra intuition from you guys just to make sure that you do find them in your game. So the first one, the hint is where mountains throw. It's in the facility behind the flinger, basically. If you 180 on the flinger, you should be able to find it on the kind of metal there. The next possible one is going to be where power ends, and that's going to be in the vault room in the facility, just to the right of the power switch on this kind of console. I think this one's actually going to be like a heart or something like that. They're not all bones. The next is going to be where Madness sleeps, that's in the jail cell. If you come through to the middle cell, on the bed, you should be able to find a jawbone. That's that one there. Then we've got one that's going to be the lightning strikes or the lightning hits. People have reported different things with this, but it's basically in front of the Wunderwaffe blueprint on this bench in the facility once again. Then if we do a little 180 from where we are here, we can get right into another one. This is where Earth crumbles. It's on the end of the conveyor belt in this geological processing area. The next is another in the facility. It's actually the last in the facility and it's where filth cleanses. You're going to come over here to these kind of bags of rubbish and you should find it nestled amongst those. The next is in the spawn area of the map. We're going to be checking out the base of the zip line here and our hint is going to be where lines birth. You basically want to look kind of in the snow there, basically where I'm pointing my camera right now in theater mode. The next possible one is going to be where fire sinks. This is in the sunken valley area of the map. There is a lantern and it should be around that lantern. You're going to want to look around in that area. That's where fire sinks. The next is where lungs close. If you're in front of the lighthouse, you're going to come through to this little tunnel of water. And while swimming through, you need to look on the base of that little tunnel and you should be able to find the part on the floor. It's quite small, but it is there. It looks almost like a mushroom. There's another one nearby here as well where feet slip. If you come down the ice slide at the base of the lighthouse, you should be able to find one basically at your feet once you get down the bottom of the slide. So look around in that area for that. Another one is inside the lighthouse. This one's going to be where one mysteries, and it's literally just on that metal stair that I'm staring at right now. Another one inside the lighthouse is actually at the top of the lighthouse. So this one is where Helices peak or where Helix's peak. It's basically against the wall somewhere or on top of something along this wall. So scoot along that wall, hold square. You should be able to get the part pretty easily. That one is not too bad. Where the hidden burns is a bit of an ambiguous one, but if you come to this area of the map on the way to the machete for the music easter egg, you should be able to find your part sort of amongst the fire on one of the sides here. I believe it's the side nearer the ship, but I'm not 100%, but I've been told that it is in that fire there. The next one is going to be where thirst dawns. You've got the soda machine just here to the left on the ledge, like actually overlooking the view, basically. You should be able to find your next part. Where north is found is nearby here too. If you come into the captain's cabin, you should be able to find the part on top of the kind of compass thing. That's that little podium in the middle of my view just here. That's what you're going to be looking for. Where preservation freezes can also be found near this life ring. It's going to basically be right where that life ring is. Just scoot along there and you should be able to hold square and pick it up. Now, this one is an interesting one where Bounded slept or where Bounded sleep because I got told that it was outside the container, but then thankfully NASCAR Fanatic, appreciate you, mate, pointed out that it looks like it's actually inside. It's a little heart at the base of one of those binding kind of chamber thingamabobs. Then we've also got where crows roost. That one is going to be at the base of the crow's nest. If you come to the old mule kick position from original Call of the Dead, where you used to get really bad frame lag and you look on those barrels, you can find a leg bone. That's going to be that one. And then we've only got two more where falls freeze, which I'm going to show you guys via the zip line because the idea is that you fall when you get off the zip line and then you freeze because you enter icy water. And this one's going to be floating in that water when you drop down. So that one is definitely a little bit of a tricky one to spot because it's quite dark in there, but it's basically a big hunk of meat that should be floating in that water. 
And then finally, where bread breaks. This one is in the cafeteria area, and it's going to basically be on the side of this kind of central island, just on the corner of it for you to pick up. Again, if you have any problems with these, links in the description down below. I'm going to help you guys out as best I can, and we're going to make sure that we get all of these damn things found, because it's a bit absurd. There are so many, but hey, I've done my best to find them all. Once you've got your third body part type thing, you'll be told that the Apothecon blood is pleased, and you now need to seek the seal of duality. This is going to work in a similar way to what we just did, and it's also where we're going to need our dynamite. So if you've still not got one of those crafted, now's the time to craft one. You'll be given a hint towards whereabouts the Seal of Duality is located. I'll be showing you the four possible locations now. One location inside an icy hall is at the bottom of the ice slide. So if you go to the base of the lighthouse, you should be able to slide down there, and you'll need to knife the poster on the wall, and then you'll place your dynamite on the safe in order to get the Seal of Duality. The second spawn is where ether was gathered. This is up in the facility in the geological processing room. The third spawn for the Seal of Duality is where humans suffer, which is specimen storage. Again, knife the poster on the wall, safe behind it, bish, bash, bosh. And finally, the last Seal of Duality spawn is where the cages hang, which is near the kind of boathouse area near the spawn where you got the soup ingredients earlier. And you'll again want to knife that poster, reveal the safe behind it, and then put a dynamite on it, blow it open, and your Seal of Duality will be inside. Side, if this is indeed where the voice was hinting to you in your game. Now again, if I've missed any spawns here, I'll absolutely update the description. So if you get stuck for any reason, check the description. Plenty of useful tips down there. When you've picked up the Seal of Duality, you need to bring it to the Apothecon Blood Red Room that I was talking about before, next to where you put the dials on the walls. The seal can be placed on the barrel in the center of the room. Be very careful not to ever interact with this thing before you're holding the seal, because it will kill you. It will just down you straight away. So be wary of that. Place the seal in the middle of the room, and then you'll notice that big red ball of light will actually start moving around in the air and you need to shoot it and when you do enough damage to it you'll notice that some orange blobs will go flying out of it and fly across the whole map. Now, a tip for this in co-op is that this is really easy, this step, if you have someone around the kind of lighthouse area keeping track of whereabouts those orange blobs fly to. There are going to be three of them total that come out of the red blob in the seal room, and your job once all of them are out is going to be to go and find them around the map. You need to not go too close to them, though, but stand at a little bit of a distance and throw snowballs at them. This is going to turn them, if you hit them successfully, from orange to blue, and once they're blue, you can shoot them once and they will return to the seal room. The main zones where the ball flies to are going to be in the facility one. There is usually one up there. In the OG Call of the Dead spawn area, that is a common one as well. And especially in the kind of fire in that area towards where the boat is. So facing the boat in those kind of patches that are slightly outside the map. The bottom of the water slide can also be an area where you see it quite often on those pathways back there in the kind of back area of the map. And towards this map spawn as well, they can be around there too. And to be honest, if you're still missing a spawn beyond that point, you might want to look through the ship area, including the captain's quarters and things like that, and also look through the lighthouse itself. It's basically the whole map. You can hear these things from a distance, so use that to your advantage. And also, if you do go too close and they move away from you, you don't need to panic. You don't need to go to a new round. You just need to start searching for them again. The balls, once you've iced them all and returned them to the seal room, are going to turn orange again, and you then need to snowball them all again one more time to turn them all blue, and then shoot them to return them into the seal itself. The seal is then going to be able to be picked up and you need to bring it to this fireplace. Hold square to place it on top of the fireplace and then bring one of your Samantha grenades that I was talking about earlier before, the Samantha music boxes, and just throw it right on top of the fire. This will cause your zombies to despawn for a moment and you'll get a minute to two minutes of audio playing with the characters talking and having a good time. Then as soon as that audio ends, you'll have a bunch more zombies spawning in, so watch out and you'll be able to pick the seal back up. Then you're going to want to head up to the hermit. He'll talk to you a little bit and Nikolai will talk to you a little bit as well, and the hermit will then give you on that little platform that he reels up and down two stone cubes. These need to be brought back to the back of the lighthouse, and you'll find that there is a laser trap you can activate there. You're going to want to activate that trap once you have placed both of the cubes down on these sort of scorch marks that are on the floor here. The laser trap will run over the cubes and basically heat them up. Then, as soon as it's run over them, you can go back to them, hold square, pick them back up again, and take them to the facility. Here, we're going to be placing one cube in the machine here, as you can see on my screen, and then you're going to bring the other cube to the 
water trap or the ice trap, which is in this doorway. Place that single cube down and turn on the trap once again to ice the cube. Then when the trap's finished, you can pick it back up. It should look icy at that point. It shouldn't look fiery anymore. And you can go and put it next to where the other cube was originally placed in this machine. That's going to allow you to pick up the fuse that was in there. And that fuse needs to be brought back to the original Call of the Dead Easter egg door, which is where the old PhD sort of spawn used to be in that area. The door will have a clear slot where the fuse needs to go. And when you've placed it, you're going to need extra power in order to charge it up. This is the point at which you need yourself the Wunderwaffe. So like I said, free Wunderwaffe Easter egg guide on my channel, or you can just spin the mystery box a bunch of times and it's in the mystery box. Multiple people can get it too. So you can just get it from there if you like. You need to bring the Wunderwaffe to the facility area of the map and shoot two red boxes, which are kind of attached to the electrical pylons out there. The first one is just here, as you can see on my screen. One shot's all it takes, nice and easy. And the second is just across the platform on the other side of where the flinger is. And it's the same deal. Shoot it once, Wunderwaffe, it'll start zapping, done. That's all you need the Wunderwaffe for. The electric zombie is what you need for this step in three separate locations. The first of which is gonna be just here on this kind of slope area heading up to the lighthouse. You can see that behind me, there is this metal electrical box thing and it's got some wires attached to it. Now, if you kill an electric zombie near it, it doesn't need to be anything special. Just kill it very close to that electrical pylon thing. It will start zapping and basically increase the power of the whole circuit you're creating. The next location I'm going to show you for this, which needs another electric zombie, is right up against the lighthouse. This one can be a little difficult to spot. It's basically next to the stairs. Kill an electric zombie, that will start sparking too. But don't mistake the sparking of that electrical pylon thing for the electrical box that the wires attach to on the lighthouse itself. They're separate things. So make sure you get that sparking. And then finally, the one I'm going to be doing is behind the lighthouse. That needs to spark. And then you simply need to return to the Call of the Dead door that we placed the fuse into before. Hold square and you'll be able to pick up the elemental shard from behind the door. The shard needs to be taken back to that Apothecon blood room. Hold square in the middle of the room once again. You're basically giving it to the Apothecons here, I suppose. Blobs are going to come out once again. Those wisps that we were shooting before. So same deal. Red blobs in the air need to be shot and they'll then kind of fracture off into the orange blobs that are around the map. You need to run around. You need to snowball them, turn them blue and then shoot them and return them to that room. Once three of them have been done around the map, you need to do the three of them again within the room itself. Same deal with more snowballs. And then with all of them back inside the seal, you can grab your seal again and then basically repeat the same as we did before with the fireplace. So grab your seal, put it on top of the fireplace, throw a Samantha music box on top of the fire. It will pause the round essentially for about two minutes. Character dialogue will play and then you'll be able to pick the seal back up again at the end. Then with that done, you need to go back to the top of the lighthouse and the hermit will talk to you before sending down his little platform and asking you to give him the seal of destiny. When you're ready to do this and by that, I I mean, when you're ready for a lockdown, your whole team need to be there. So make sure you've pack-a-punched, etc. first, and then go over with the whole team, hold square, and he'll take the seal. You'll be locked inside the lighthouse for about two minutes and the lockdown will take place. And when you're done, he will reel the seal of destiny back down to you and you'll be able to take it back. As soon as you take it back, you will no longer be able to pack-a-punch in your game. Pack-a-punch basically becomes disabled. So bear that in mind, you really need to get all your loadout sorted before you do that lockdown if possible. Once you've passed the point of no return, your next set of steps in the Easter egg are basically going to be the same thing multiple times. You need to go to the Pack-a-Punch location in the original Call of the Dead spawn area and place the Seal of Duality inside the machine. The machine is then going to act as a soul box and it takes a lot of souls. I warn you now, it's a lot of them. So get ready for this to really last a long time. When you've filled it up with enough souls, the Seal of Duality will pop out of the machine and you can grab it. Then the pack a punch location where the lighthouse is pointing is going to move to a new location and so you're going to basically follow exactly what i'm doing in my gameplay here go to that new location put your seal of duality in and then fill the soul box up once again then when done the seal will pop out you need to pick it up and go to the next location once again same deal put it inside kill zombies for a while it will take a lot of souls when it's done it will pop out and then fourth and finally you're going to go to that pack a punch location put the seal inside get your kills get those souls in there and it will pop out when you're finished with that fourth location done, we're basically going to repeat the whole wisp thing, except this time the wisps aren't going to go all over the map. They're just going to stay in the room. So 
you need to put the seal of duality on the barrel, you need to shoot the red blob and get the orange blobs out of it, you need to snowball them and turn them blue, and then you need to shoot them so that they go back into the seal, and when you've done that three times, you'll be able to pick your seal back up, go over to your fireplace, throw another Samantha on it, let it play the audio, and then pick your seal back up when it's all done. Now, once you've done all of that, that will take a couple minutes. It's a lengthy process. You really are at the turning point, the point of no return here, because you are now going to all, as a group, fling yourselves over to the golden Pack-A-Punch machine on that little island. But once you do this, you're not going to be able to buy any perks anymore in your game. You're not going to be able to get all of your mystery box spins in and stuff like that. This is really basically the boss fight, so make sure you're prepped before you go and do this final fifth Pack-A-Punch location. As soon as as your team are ready, you all need to stand on the flinger at the same time and you'll fling over to the golden pack. Place the seal inside and you'll then have to basically hold off zombies and fill it up like a soul box just like you've already been doing. However, this one's going to end slightly differently. You're basically going to be flung into a moving soul box sequence. It's like a lockdown that moves around the entire map. There's going to be a bubble that is your safe bubble, and outside that bubble, you're going to take damage. So you need to stay inside there and be very wary of where the bubble is moving to, because if you run the wrong way and get cut off, you're going to die. The bubble will start moving after a few seconds in that gold Pack-A-Punch island, and you will be flung off the island back to where the bubble lands. The zombie spawns at first are not going to be too crazy, so you can afford to go a little light on your ammo here and just try and take out only as many zombies as you need to take down. Also, also, the reason I'm not speeding the gameplay up here so you can just see the first place where it's going to stop and become a soul box is because it actually is really hard to see anything at all when footage is sped up and you've got this filter effect on your screen. So I'm just doing a little bit of extra talking here, showing you guys at a little bit of a slower pace what the path of the bubble is going to look like. Okay, so once you've followed the path that I've followed in the gameplay here, you'll find that the soul box or the bubble stops in this area with the kind of seal floating in the middle of the room. To get through this, you just need to feed it souls once again, and when it's finished, it's going to float downwards into the gap in the floor there, and you're going to need to follow it. So run along the boat and go down the little stairway, and that's how you're going to stay with the bubble. You basically need to sort of loop around there. Now be careful, because the ice water is going to turn to lava water here, so you're going to want to be jumping on the platforms that are going to be appearing in order to save your feet from certain death. The seal is going to keep working its way through the map, and then there's going to be another soul box, which is kind of in front of the lighthouse. That's where it's going to stop again. So again, get a load of kills once you get there, if you can. The build-up to that position is actually quite slow. It takes quite a long time to get to that soul box, so I think that this is a good point to use specialist weapons, and then while you're killing for the soul box, you'll be recharging your specialist, ready to use them again as you head to the next location. When you've got a enough souls filled on that paused area of the map outside the lighthouse, it's going to start working its way again through the map, and you've got to be really careful here, because it's going to start to do what it sort of did in Alpha Omega a little bit, and dither around a little, like it might jibate you into thinking it's going one way, but actually it's going another way, so you'll need to follow it very carefully, and when you notice it start going across where the zip line is to the facility, that's when you all need to pile on the zip line and make sure you stay with it. It's going to reach the facility, you're going to reach the facility, too, and you then need to fight your way with the bubble into that main room where we previously put those stone blocks into the computer and where the vault is. There's going to be another soul box in there. Things are going to be getting absolutely crazy at that point, and the bubble is going to start shrinking as you feed it souls. You just need to survive as best you can here. Use all of the stuff that you have available, your Samantha boxes, your monkey bombs, your wonder weapons, whatever it might be. There have been some crashes on this step, so be careful of that, but I'd say just throw everything that you've got at it in the hopes of actually surviving, because better to survive and crash than to die and not even get to the ending at all. And when you've survived in that area for long enough, with the bubble shrunk small enough, you'll find that the lockdown, at last, has been completed. For a minute or two, you'll hear characters talking, and there'll basically be a little story sequence while you just kind of stare into the Agathan device, and then you'll need to run all the way back over across the map to the lighthouse and to the hermit. You need to give him the Agathan device, and then he's going to instruct you to go to the boat, so all of you should just head on over there and wait for him to make his next move. He's going to tell you that he has been Pablo this whole time. What a surprise. And he can finally go and fulfill his destiny. 
He'll float up into the sky, and his last act in the map will be to throw the Agathon device down and allow you to go and pick it up once you follow its trajectory on the boat. The act of picking it up, that moment when you hold square, will end your game. So bear that in mind, and congratulations, because that's also the end of the Easter egg. This is what you've been building up to this whole time, this end cutscene, and this also marks the end of zombies which is pretty crazy. But hopefully it's been a fun ride and this guide has also been useful. If it has been, then please drop a like on the video and subscribe for more videos like this one in the future. Hopefully, if they keep zombies going. Anyway, I've been Mr. Rob Waffles. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.